thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. So here we have Los Angeles. Over here, this is downtown LA, and Santa Monica College is right there. So as you can see, this is a pretty grim picture. This is a scenario that no one wants to think about. This is your typical Chinese nuclear warhead detonating above downtown LA. Not a good thing, right? So this whole orange ring is thermal radiation, third degree burns. Nobody wants to deal with that. I mean, Einstein, one of the pioneers of atomic weapons, not necessarily, but he, he, his research certainly did contribute to it. He said that he did not know what weapons World War III would be fought with, but World War IV would be fought with sticks and stones. Now that's a really terrifying picture for us to think about, destroying humanity, destroying everything. Uh, upon detonation, these massive explosions are dozens of times hotter than the surface of the sun. They could decimate entire cities and potentially wipe out the world. So it's, it's, you know, it's something that we've all been concerned about, I'm sure. Many of you have heard of the movie Oppenheimer. Anyone here heard of Oppenheimer? Seen the movie? Good movie? Good movie. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Unpopular opinion. It was too long. But I did watch it. All right. That's, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horrible scenario. I mean, and nobody wants to think about it. Anyone here ever been concerned about nuclear war? That's a lot of us, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's something that I've also been very concerned about. Uh, though this is a very bad situation, there's definitely some steps that we can all take to be prepared. I've been worried about it ever since I knew about it and over the course of many years have done research so that I can have a plan in place should this happen. So hopefully my family and I would come out alive, scarred, but alive. Um, I'd like to share the six most important steps I feel are essential to surviving a disaster like this. Now these steps are to have a seven day kit and be prepared, to look for the flash, to get down and get undercover, to evacuate or seek shelter, to take potassium iodide, and last but not least to just wait out the fallout and wait for rescue. So for your first step here. the six steps. Your first step, you need to be prepared before any disaster, that's the most important thing. You need food, water, medications, hygiene and clothing, and most importantly a radio for a week, minimum. Change of clothes would also be a good idea. Being prepared gives you a much better shot at surviving anything. Uh, Self-defense is also something to consider in an event like this when people are going to be you know, needing supplies and you want to make sure that your supplies stay your supplies and that you can be safe. That's a pretty self-explanatory thing is to be prepared. So once you're prepared for a disaster like this, when a disaster happens, you need to, to know when it's happening. So the first thing you're gonna notice is a flash, so bright, brighter than anything you've ever seen. It's gonna make solid walls transparent. It's going to blind you. It's going to burn your skin from infrared rays. And uh, it's just not gonna be very good. Things are gonna catch on fire, but you're gonna know undoubtedly, okay, I'm in the middle of a nuclear attack. It's something that you're not gonna be able to mistake for something else. And so the first thing you need to do as soon as you see this, I mean, you can see here the damage that this causes. You have a silhouette from Hiroshima. You have a blind person from Hiroshima who are unfortunately caught in the middle of this. Now, once you know that you're in a nuclear attack from this blinding flash, the step three th the thing you're gonna to wanna to do, split second, is get to cover. You only have a few seconds. Cover is the most important thing to surviving the blast and the shock wave. You only have a few seconds. Uh, if you're inside like we are now, you're gonna wanna stay away from the windows, so, oh, there's a flash, oh my goodness, the flash is coming from downtown, down on the ground. Cover your head, cover your eyes, cover your ears if you can, and just wait for the shock wave to pass over you. If you survive that, that's great. If you're outside, you're gonna wanna get behind a concrete, so, there's a big concrete barrier over there. That's what you're gonna to wanna to get behind. Stay away from cars. Anything with gasoline in it, stay away from dry shrubbery. It can explode, it can ignite. Very bad situation. You'll probably get burns, but you'll probably survive if, you're, if you have ample cover. Uh, so step number four, if you've somehow survived the blast, which is unlikely, but if you have, you need to immediately make a split second decision. Are you going to get out of the vicinity of where the bomb has exploded or are you gonna shelter in place so that you can stay safe from the radiation? Now, most of us, I mean, how many of us are close towards downtown LA or in East LA? You're not gonna to wanna to evacuate. We have an onshore flow from the west. Any radiation is going to be pushed towards you. Not to mention that 
roads are probably going to be destroyed, the infrastructure is destroyed, there might be a lot of traffic trying to get out. Most of us, unless we're in like the valley and can easily get north, are going to want to shelter in place. So if you can find a subway, if you can find a basement, something underground, that's excellent. Most of us are going to have to use the first floor of our homes, get into the interior rooms. You're going to want to find a closet, maybe the bathroom if there's no windows, somewhere as far inside away from the outside world as you can possibly go. And you're going to barricade yourself in there with your seven-day kit and all your family members. And you are not going to leave no matter what. You're going to change your clothes so that if there's any radiation on them, it'll get off. You're going to shower if you can. And you're just going to stay in there with your food the entire time. Now, while you're sheltering in place and not leaving, you're going to be, there are certain things you can do to increase your survival uh, from the radiation. You know, radiation is a concern. While you're sheltering in place, you're going to want to, step five, you're going to take your potassium iodide. Now, this is readily available on Amazon and health food stores. It's everywhere. Potassium iodide is a chemical compound, uh, minerals, that helps lessen the amount of radiation absorbed by your thyroid gland and other parts of the body after an event like this. Um, it's given to patients of cancer who have radiation treatment and everything. So you're going to want to continue taking that dosage of potassium iodide until you can exit your shelter. And you'll know when to exit your shelter from step six. You're going to wait out the fallout. Now, this fallout will decay after probably about seven days. But while you're waiting, you want to check on your radio as often as you can. Remain sheltered for at least seven days if there's no way that you can use a radio or get any contact and wait for people to come rescue you. You know, if there's any more attacks, stay inside, and when you do get rescued, you want medical attention immediately, even if you don't appear to be injured, because radiation does havoc on your body. You need a decontamination at the very least. So, congratulations. You have survived one of the worst disasters imaginable. You've beat the odds, and you're still alive. You're probably a little messed up, but you're still alive. So, the things to remember are... This, the six most important steps to survive, which is to have a seven-day kit, number one. Number two, to look for the flash and recognize that you're in the midst of an attack. Number three, to get down and get to cover. Number four, to evacuate or to seek shelter. Number five, to take potassium iodide. And number six, you want to wait out the fallout. You know, though it's really bad, these steps can certainly help you to survive. Uh, if you come out with, uh, with radiation poisoning, you know, You've survived the blast, and you can tell your children that you have lived through the atomic age. So congratulations to you guys. I hope this has helped you. You know, God forbid something like this should happen in the meantime. Just pray that it doesn't. But uh, that's what we have to live with in the modern world. Thank you very much.